In part two of our series on how to stop terrorist financing, we take you behind the headlines to a congressional debate on stopping the flow of cash through the plunder and sale of antiquities. VOA's Caroline Turner has more. Because the U.S. is the world's largest art market, it is often the final destination for art and priceless antiquities smuggled in on the black market. So, George. These antiquities from Iraq were smuggled into the U.S. and now repatriated back to Iraq. Experts believe international money laundering is supporting this criminal activity. Recently, the U.S. Congressional Task Force investigating terrorist financing and the plunder and sale of cultural treasures heard testimony from experts. ISIS has been dubbed the world's richest terrorist army, and the illegal antiquities trade is one income stream which gives the group significant strategic advantage against the existing counter-terror finance efforts. The trade's main target buyers are, ironically, history enthusiasts and art aficionados in the United States and Europe representatives of the societies which ISIS has pledged to destroy. Experts say authenticating and tracking the movement of artifacts is such a challenge, they are ideal for money laundering. Antiquities freshly looted from the ground have no established value and no documented history. They can be mined from the ground as new commodities. Therefore, they are the perfect vehicle for moving funds and value around the world and for supporting illegal activities, such as trade-based money laundering, purchase of drugs and weapons, organized crime, and terrorism. The Middle East is home to cultural remains beginning in the second millennia BC. Syria is home to six world heritage sites, which represent thousands of years of civilizations. Mari, Syria, fell under ISIS control in the summer of 2014. Satellite images reveal some looting before ISIS, but many more after ISIS control, shown here in red. Experts explain ISIS did not invent plundering and looting for money, but simply took over the practice. Moreover, it actually um, uh, institutionalized the process and intensified it to a great degree. In fact, what we can say is that um, ISIS sees cultural heritage as a resource to be exploited like any other. On display is an ISIS revenue looter's license, a huge source of revenue for ISIS. The heavy machinery, you can see it here now being used to gouge chunks of earth out of sight. And if you don't think that this is producing good material, here are some of the finds that came out of this one site that was being looted. Not only pieces of pottery, but also these uh, bronze and uh, metal uh, items or coming from a Bronze Age. If the looter fails to sell the items, ISIS takes them back and sells them at a regular auction in Raqqa. These two statues from Palmyra were listed for 150,000 U.S. dollars and sold just before ISIS was forced out. Experts want to disrupt this black market. Perhaps more importantly, to convince the middlemen and the dealers and the looters along the way that they will not eventually be able to sell these things in the United States. How can we best address money laundering through the art trade, sir? So let's suppose a uh, one of the large banks in the United States has offered a basket of art objects, whether uh, cultural heritage objects or art as we might normally think of it, for a loan transaction for $50 million. Right now, because of the lack of information sharing, that financial institution would have no way of knowing whether that same basket of assets was presented to six banks around the world in the last 30 days. Experts advise Congress to shape the new legislation to empower financial and law enforcement agencies to stop funding terrorist organizations. Title insurers are in a good position to generate suspicious activity reports because they are charged with vetting assets for documented authenticity, ownership, and value. Carolyn Turner, VOA News, Washington.